you got the suction side service valve, which is right here. This is your accumulator slash dryer. And then down below that is your pressure switch. This is a low pressure switch. This switch is normally closed unless it, uh, it breaks the pressure too low or this switch goes bad. If this switch goes bad, it can cut open, which is what it's doing here. I don't have my service gauges with me today to show you if this air conditioning system is running fine. The refrigerator charge is good and there's no restrictions. There's no reason it should be going out on low pressure. But there's two wires on this pressure switch. We're going to go ahead and T-pin the bottom wire. We're going to go with a jumper straight to the negative terminal on the battery. We'll hook that up to our negative lead. Set your meter to volts DC. Then check it to the positive. You should have 14 volts. We're going to go ahead and get on our first T pin. We're reading 14 volts all the time, so this is our incoming power. Um, and you'll know that here in just a second why I say this is the incoming, but we're reading 14 volts. You want to make sure not to touch your lead to ground. Keep it right on the teeth end. You can hear the vehicle clicking in and out, but it's staying 14. So that right there lets me know that the power coming in is good. We're going to go ahead and check the other wire, the wire coming back out of the switch. See, we're reading nothing but wait for it to click on. And this low pressure switch is definitely bad. Like I said, I've already checked the charge in this. I don't have my uh, compound gauges with me today to show you guys, but I will in a future video show you that uh, the pressures are fine in this van. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to troubleshoot the pressure transducer, which is on the high side as well, in case that may be your problem. On this Ford vehicle, it's right beneath where the condenser fans are. Just as soon as I unplugged at high speed, that's a good sign. go ahead and find us a good ground all right we're jumped onto this nut right here and I'm gonna just twist it around so I can get a good bite that's one thing you definitely want to make sure of is that you're keeping the ground we're gonna go on the negative lead again the black lead just like we did earlier Got our ground. Our meter set to volts DC. All right, we're gonna go ahead and check this. As you can see on the brown to white, the brown with the white stripe, we have 5.13 volts. That lets me know that we have reference voltage on one of these wires. Well, this is unplugged. It has an internal resistor in the computer. And if this gets unplugged, it's gonna send five volts. 
through the signal wire as well. So we'll go through each and check. One of them will be a ground, and the other one is going to be our uh, return wire. We moved our uh, T-pin over to the next one. We're reading 5.12 volts on that as well. We're going to go ahead now and check our ground. And on our ground, we're reading 96.5 millivolts. That's a little high, but our ground down here, remember, it's not that good of a ground. So I'm going to switch back to one of these two that we think is the reference, either the brown whites, or I believe that this other one, the second one I got on, is yellow. I'm not sure. We're back to our 5.12. I'm going to plug this back into that sensor and you'll hear these fans die off. And now the fans have cut off. You want to be very careful and not touch this T-pin to any metal. You will short out that wire. You don't want to short out a reference wire. Now I'm back on the T-pin and as you can see, we're reading 1.7 volts. Now if you're reading high, like anywhere like three, three and a half volts, then you can suspect that you either have a high pressure problem, you always want to use a, a refrigerant manifold gauge set to check this, but see how the uh, voltage is dropping now that the clutch has killed this again. As soon as that clutch uh, engages again, see how our pressure is going back up. And usually these things are read about 1.2 when they're getting power through them, just standing pressure. Now, if I would have accidentally got on the wrong wire, this would be reading 5 volts right now. That's fine. You can switch from that back to the other one, but you should have a difference when this is plugged in. One should read about 1.5 volts, the other one should read 5, then you'll have your ground, which will read about a half a millivolt. See, just to show you, if we're on the reference wire with this plugged in, it'll read 5.12. If you're reading 5.12 on both sides, either you have a bad pressure switch or that pressure switch pins are not making contact with the sensor. That's a good way to troubleshoot that. But we're reading 5.12 on the reference. We already know we're reading about 1.5 on the sensor wire. So that lets me know our wire integrity is good. That lets me know our sensor is good. And that uh, first test that I did there with the low pressure switch lets me know that that low pressure switch is bad. That low pressure switch is a normally closed switch. If the pressure gets too low, that switch will open up to protect the compressor. Now, like I've already said, our uh, refrigerant is good, our compressor is good. We have no restrictions. So what I need to do until I can get a switch for this so I can use the air conditioning is go ahead and jump out that low pressure switch. Now I can do that with this where this is a, just a normally closed switch. This isn't a uh, transducer. Pressure transducer you can't do this with. You'll short it out and you'll burn out the engine computer.